Welcome to a brand new episode of Sequel Rights, the podcast where we take a look at the franchises that make you go, they made how many of those? And we give each and every sequel a fair trial. My name is Justin Camps, and I'm here with... Elizabeth Helley. And... Tyler Rambo. Tyler Rambo. Tyler Rambo. Tyler, you sound just in, like him. In, inmate 5457. You sound just like the expendable... John Rambo, <laughs> as played by Sylvester Stallone. Rambo, He's... you know Expendable. <laughs> yeah. You sound just like uh, Julie Nixon or whatever her name yeah. is. Yeah. Julia Nixon. Um, anyways, we're you know slowly getting closer to the release of Rambo Last Blood. And that means that we're on to another Rambo film. This time... First Blood. Part two. Part two. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid it's not called Second Blood. <laughs> I know, they really fucked that up. Um, but before we get too far, um, I just want to say thanks for being here. Uh, and, you know, normally we put the uh, where to reach us at the end of the episode. We still will. But just in case you don't make it that far, why don't we talk about it now? Yeah. So, Elis, people want to get in touch with us throughout the week. Send us your stories about Vietnam. <laughs> Your time and Nam. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, we do need uh, suggestions for franchises to do after Rambo. So please email us sequelrights at gmail.com and find us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Sequel Rights. But the best way to get our attention is to leave a five star review on Apple Podcasts, and we will get that message right quick. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's move ahead a couple years to just two weeks. After my birth for <laughs> Rambo First Blood Part 2. Joined Army 6 June 69. Accepted Special Forces. Helicopter and language qualified. <laughs> Expert in light weapons and guerrilla warfare. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone is back as Rambo. Rambo is the best combat vet I've ever seen. He's back. The best vet he's ever seen. The whole opening of that uh, trailer where there's no dialogue, it's just that like slow motion shot of like Sylvester Stallone's totally insanely ripped arm. That could, right. There's that one shot in the movie where it's that just, shot like, was slow so motion. zoomed in, I wasn't really sure what I was looking at for a moment. <laughs> like, is, like, that is, that beef, jer- is that beef jerky? Is that what? I think it's his dick. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, dude got fucking jacked for this movie. He did. He did. Um, I've moved further along in my training to become John Rambo. Um, <laughs> I watched part two of the How to Become Rambo oh. <laughs> on the Blu-ray. Is this going to be on every Blu-ray? I think there's three parts. Oh, my God. <laughs> so this part was all about the back, so now my back is totally ripped, you guys. You, you shredded? <laughs> Good thing this is a podcast, so people can't really see. see. <laughs> trust me, I'm totally it's, ripped. Yeah, it's it's horrifying. He can't put his arms down to the side of his body. But uh, yeah, the 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 training regimen in those things is all about like how what he did to get in shape for Rambo Part Two, and uh, yeah, he's about double the size in this movie. Did he did he run up a bunch of steps and drink a bunch of eggs? No, they just did uh, you know weights. <laughs> well, and because we're back in Vietnam, uh, it's hot. <laughs> Whereas before yeah. he was in the Pacific Northwest, he was very cold. This yeah. time he's got to strip down to a this, tank top. This time he's glistening. Yes. It's all lubed up. Yeah. <laughs> so you could slide right through you, all that jungle. Yeah. You couldn't even, you couldn't grab him if you wanted to. <laughs> That's right. He's right over there. They probably <laughs> barely him. did anything to make him look like that. It was probably just that bad. Yeah, yeah totally. I think they filmed in uh, Mexico. In Mexico. But do. clearly in a jungle. Oh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's First Blood Part 2. And we do get a little bit of a feeling that it uh, picks up where we Yeah, left. where we last left Rambo, he's been in prison. He was freeze frame walking to the jailhouse. Yes. <laughs> well, I think it's good, though, that they show that there were some consequences from that whole mm-hmm. freaking thing. Yeah. He's now uh, driving giant nails into rocks. Yeah. For He's at the part. quarry. It's like it's like <laughs> the beginning of Les Mis or whatever. Like yeah. I, you could put the soundtrack over them going like, "Look down, look down," and it, like he's hitting the rocks with a giant hammer. Like, Why wasn't Sylvester Stallone in Les Mis? I don't know. I don't know. 
He should have been singing. He was too expendable at the moment. (laughs) That's probably true. (laughs) Why wasn't Frank Stallone in... uh, (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Are you going to talk about that this early? No, no. Well, you you brought up singing, so I just had to. Yeah. Uh, Frank Stallone uh, sings a song in this movie. uh, He does. He does. Um, So Richard Crenna shows up as Troutman, Colonel Troutman, back. Yes. And he's got a proposition for John Rambo. Well, he's run, they've run it through the computer, and there's only three people who are capable of this mission. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) There's a strong running thread throughout this movie that computers are bad. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know why, but. Gotta kill the computers. You feel like Stallone was just kind of like, nope, no computers. I hate them. (laughs) I don't understand them. Computers bad. You know what else I thought was crazy that I didn't know? Before we before going into this movie, mm-hmm. script co-written by James Cameron. Oh yes, yeah. The, what the hell? The sequel, Doctor. Um, yeah, I was like, so okay, so in his prime. So right you here. have him. <laughs> in, He's still in his prime. Yeah. What point yeah. is this? In the James Cameron uh, chronology. Uh, no, it's so it's um, pre Terminator. Yeah, I believe so. Um, so probably post Piranha. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so I think like before the James Cameron ascendancy, but definitely he is has his stamp on some of the greatest action sequels of all time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And some of the least greatest dialogue of all time, <laughs> <laughs> which when they are having the, like the heart to heart scenes, I was kind of like, is this from avatar? Like it sounded so similar <laughs> to me, but you know, whatever. Rambo's like, I see you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now have your tail touch my tail. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, so apparently, Sylvester Stallone did not like James Cameron's pass of this because oh. he, he had uh, a pass of this script where Rambo had like a techie sidekick. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Did you see who was supposed it's like to be short round? Or did you see who was supposed yeah. to be his sidekick? In no, this? who was supposed to be? Oh, uh, it was John Travolta. Yes. Yeah. What? John, it was supposed to be like a buddy thing, and that was like his. Hey, Rambo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can you remember that? Computer over here. <laughs> So yeah, he would have been like one of the weird sunglass wearing mercenaries that uh, they end up working with. Oh uh, lord, that would have been so well, funny! What a different movie this would have been. With Rambo right. definitely dodged a bullet, literally, <laughs> figuratively, emotionally. Travolta could have flown him out of there, though. Uh, that's, I suppose. I suppose. So Trauman picks him up and takes him on another mission. That's right. And suddenly I was like, I feel like I've seen this movie before. (laughs) (laughs) I did appreciate what Richard Crenna is doing with Troutman. Again, like we had said multiple times in the first movie, you're not really sure. You're like, whose side is this guy on? Like, is he good or is he bad? I don't know. Like, for the beginning of the movie, I still felt like that for quite a while until you get to the big twist. But in the beginning, I'm kind of like, is this good or not? I don't know. Yeah, Richard Crenna is, again, great in this role. And he gets to have another, like... Rambo is the best person yeah. I've ever seen in the fight. He's like, he's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> he's the greatest person of all time. He, he was will, he was formed from pure molten hero. He's the only person <laughs> that can do this. The best line it, it culminates in what you choose to call hell, he calls home. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, he feels at home back in Vietnam, which or is in hell. Yeah, in hell too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So his mission, should he choose to accept it, which he does. He kind of has no choice. Yeah, uh, <laughs> is to go to Vietnam and take photos, just photos, mm-hmm. of uh, a POW, a known POW camp uh, to see if there's any POWs left there because there is some controversy at the time uh, and to this day of leaving POWs behind in Vietnam um, and so this was pretty topical at the time when this movie came out. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so his his mission is to go in there. Rambo thinks that he's going to be able to save the people, and they say, no, you just got to take pictures. And he meets a bunch of dumb buff dudes yeah. that are hanging around. <laughs> and also weights. he's been taken out of prison, and it's made clear that if this mission is successful, that he will be pardoned for his crimes. Right. But it also seems when Trapman shows up to the prison, like, he's kind of okay with it. Like, yeah, which that, like, you kind of get the feeling that he might just be like, you know what? This sounds real, like a lot of drama. I'm probably going to get screwed over again by the government. Yeah. Maybe I should just stay here. But I mean, I think 
the reason he does go is because like he believes there are actually POWs. Well, there. yeah, because Truman says that that yeah, it's about saving guys. They're still over there. Yeah. He's like, okay, they're not. Doing I think it. otherwise, but, if it was just about him being pardoned, he would have been like, I'm just gonna stay in prison. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. This provides structure for me. It's great for my <laughs> mental health. Yeah. And we get to sing Les Mis songs. That's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that guy over there, over there on the chain gang. Killer baritone. <laughs> and you know and what? All he I did do was... mean killer. <laughs> That's right. Literally. And that other guy, all he did was steal a loaf of bread. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so he goes, he gets dropped off in country, but all does not go according to plan. No. He's almost immediately, like, almost killed, like, right away. Well, was no. this on purpose or an accident? So it was it was an accident. Here's okay. the thing. If you're writing this Rambo screenplay, right? Mm-hmm. What do people like about Rambo? Rambo is he just, always is it, fucking things yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, he has, he has, he has <laughs> no, he has guerrilla tactics. Like so if you said you send Rambo with a full like a machine gun and a bunch of shit, it's like, well, Rambo's going to win every time. Yeah. We have to make him drop all of his gear and just leave him stranded in the woods with nothing. So how do we do that? We make him completely fuck up his <laughs> jump. <laughs> make him look like a real <laughs> idiot. <laughs> Never jumped out of plane before, <laughs> Rambo. <laughs> He almost dies. Yeah, he he almost stuck, dies. And almost gets chopped up in the plane. They're but, like, the uh, turbulence is going to rip him apart! <laughs> like six yeah. times. Uh, they've also told it's him like, that have he you has... Have seen that dude? Abort he's, the ripped mission. His, he's ripped his <laughs> shit. He'll be fine. They, they've told him that he has all the most high-tech computer stuff, and there's a whole room of computer nerds that are yeah. feeding him <laughs> intel, supposedly. There's a, there's a whole room of Travolta's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> this at, entire wall can calculate two plus two. <laughs> By the way, he supposedly has like this camera for quite a while. Like I think he holds on to it after he loses some of the equipment because he's supposed to be getting these pictures. But never <laughs> once do you see this camera or <laughs> is it demonstrated that Rambo even knows how to work a camera. <laughs> like It is never shown on screen. That is that is true. It's yeah. like you, I don't see Rambo like setting up a tripod. He never even takes it out. Adjusting the shutter don't speed. They, don't they show him put the film in it once? Oh, uh, they think probably. So. Do. I think they do. I didn't there, see that? Okay. There's like a. There's like a. It was I'm actually. Getting, John, it was actually John Travolta's hands putting <laughs> the film in the camera. But there's like a like I'm getting all my shit together but montage. He never, t- he never takes a picture. The moment that he sees the POWs, he's like, "Well, I gotta save it," and he just like takes off. Yeah, yeah. I mean. He does see the POWs on a bamboo crucifix. For like, sure. it's not like, oh, like, there they are. Uh, but before he gets to the camp, he meets his intelligence contact. And before that, oh, yes, he meets a snake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, I was so, so what ends up happening is that, like, so er, like, everyone back at the base is like, oh, Rambo, like, no one could have survived that. Rambo's dead. Rambo's a dead man. He's totally dead. We should, we should scrap the mission. <laughs> and then, like, as they're talking about it, it cuts to Rambo running through the jungle like he just, like, was past a football and he's running for a touchdown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, he's, like, checking plants out of the way. <laughs> like, he's, he's just sprinting through the jungle. And there's a snake hanging down from a vine and he, it, like, hisses at him and he grabs it, looks at it, and is like, no, nah. nah, you're cool. <laughs> and then throws it away. <laughs> he's like, it's so he's funny. Like, it looks like one of those rubber snakes you buy at the uh, at just like any <laughs> tourist trap area that like uh, you know looks like it's a real snake and he like intimidates stays. the snake into not biting him. <laughs> he then stumbles upon the temple of the forbidden eye. That's right. <laughs> The uh, fountain of youth. <laughs> <laughs> you looked into my eyes. <laughs> hey, snake. You're cool. <laughs> You're good. Next. Don't fuck with me. <laughs> then he, he meets someone who happens to be a lady. What? What, what? what? And she has a character name, but do we ever hear it in the yeah, movie? Yeah. Her name's Ko, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I don't remember. I, I was like, I can't remember them ever saying her name. Mm. <laughs> and she's like the slick spy contact that he's supposed to have in country. Mm-hmm. And she's going to bribe a bunch of pirates to take them upriver into the camp. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'm just like, man, this is all real familiar to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking back and I was like, we, uh, you know, if you guys didn't know, uh, we, we went through the Missing in Action series. Yes. And the first movie in that actually came out the year before this. 
And uh, it's very similar. <laughs> it's incredibly similar. <laughs> With a little... Uh, missing in Action has a little bit more hand-to-hand combat. But well, and Missing in Action is very... Um, almost blindingly earnest in the mm-hmm. way that it believes in America and in the government and the military, where, of course, this is a much sharper... Uh, it's much more cynical, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so, <laughs> then we get to... Uh, they're staking out this camp, and I think one of the funniest things that's said in this movie is that they see a, a girl in a silk dress show up to the <laughs> edge of the camp, and then... Co goes to Rambo and says, "Bicycle girl, no cyclo girl, uh, cyclo girl, whore from village." Because <laughs> I thought it made her sound like a superhero, like cyclo girl, whore from village. <laughs> it's like, oh, like these guys are bad. Like, oh. They're torturing guys and having sex with prostitutes. Uh, <laughs> unacceptable. Yeah, the guy like spanks her butt as she goes by the gate. Yeah. Like, yeah. But Rambo goes sneaking in and no one notices. Well, how could they? He's he's built for he's stealth, this man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, he confirms that uh, even though Coe said that it was supposed to be empty, there's all sorts of POWs up in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And even one that he uh, he's able to get one out because there's that. one that's already out on a crucifix as Tyler right. mentioned yeah so. yeah so, he, so he's like no i can't allow this to happen you see the other ones in cages grabs him gets him out uh i think for proof in his mind no uh, i think just to save him yeah i think that's rambo's all about just that yeah uh and so they get him out they get him to the uh oh that's right get him to a boat for the pirates and uh, earlier in the movie, we get some foreshadowing because Rambo asks what happens when the pirate ship comes across <laughs> the patrol. And then the patrol guy lifts up a, a I guess, just like a, a bench. A, a bench. Boat bench. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I got hung up on that. Uh, and, and oh, there's a Russian missile launcher in there. And it's like, yeah. and, and they make a very large point to turn to each other. And Rambo and Kobe, like, Russians. Well, yeah, because the boat also has, like, Russian writing on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that leads us to where we're getting a double dip of U.S. aggression <laughs> <laughs> later on in this movie. Uh, but basically the pirates betray them. And uh, as Rambo gets back to this boat, and this is where the movie goes <laughs> off the rails. He kills all of them <laughs> real fast. Rambo has weird little stabby knives. In his <laughs> I call belt. them baby belt knives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rambo uses his baby belt knives uh, <laughs> to kill everybody on the boat. <laughs> then he stabs a man on like the palapa that's covering the whole thing. <laughs> then he uses the rocket launcher. Not the last time he's going to do this in this movie to blow up the other boat. I love too that uh, like there is you know all this um, there's all this like room in the budget for all these giant explosions, but yeah. when they shoot the rocket launcher, you don't see the rocket ever like leave. It just is like poof, you hear the noise and there's like a little bit of fire, but then all of a sudden the boat blows up. <laughs> you don't you don't see the rocket like flying towards the boat or anything. <laughs> Like there's a lot of really quick cuts yeah, in this movie. Not enough budget for like a real looking rocket launcher. <laughs> um and then somehow his boat explodes too. And he jumps off of that. Yeah. No, he's on the boat and the other boat that's already on fire crashes into right. it. That's and the POW right. and Co are on the shore and they're like, Rambo, you made it. And I'm like, I think he knows he made it. Like yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> Great job, yeah. man. You can swim. Je- Jesse, w- Jesse was piloting the other boat. Yeah. Decided to just drive it into the <laughs> it other one. It was exactly like that. <laughs> um, but he sends Co away, and she's like, better, I stay till end. And he's like, no, go away. I'm going to take this POW. You're going to get killed. Leave. But that allows her to not be captured when, um, well, let's talk about the twist. So this is the best scene in the movie. So basically, Rambo has gotten accomplished the mission after it Everyone counted him out. Troutman had to fight with Murdoch, uh, who is the government stooge that we haven't really talked about. Uh, had to fight with him just to be like, look, Rambo has a 36-hour window. We owe him that. 
let's not scrap the mission. Let's still do the extraction. Murdoch does a really shitty thing where he's just like, okay, Trapman, if you want to do the extraction, you can go on the team. That's really brave of you. You're a real brave guy. Go go get on that helicopter, brave man. Um, <laughs> and uh, so Rambo has beaten the odds. He has found proof of the POWs. Uh, mission accomplished. He has carried one all the way to this extraction point. All the point. way to the LZ and is running up the mountain. Hot pursuit. He is there. The helicopter is there. And then Murdoch calls off the helicopter. Says, nope, we can't pick him up. Can't rescue these POWs. And we find out that the entire operation was a scam. It was supposed to be so that the Congress could say, there's no POWs. We sent this war hero into Vietnam. He found nothing. And so we can forget about everybody. Because, like, Co kept saying over and over again that the camp was supposed to be empty. So that is the... Like intel they were working on, but yep. uh, well, we saw case. this before in the other movies too. As a you know, supposedly there were these camps, but that they They're purposely working. made it look all boarded up and like yep. no one was living there, and they were purposely trying to hide the fact that there were any. Yeah, and that yep. they moved them all the time. Yeah, so it they might have been empty when they first got that. Intel. Yeah, yeah. So they had to move every Since season. Moved. And so Trapman's in the helicopter, and the. Sunglassed weird dudes, uh, mercenaries, pull a gun on him, basically saying, like, no, you can't do anything. And Rambo has to sit there while it has his salvation. He's like, bring it out, come on. Yeah, well, bring it out. I'm right here. It <laughs> to the credit of the, all these military guys, the there's, like, probably 30 military guys there, and it's really yeah. only the Colonel Murdoch and, like, two flunkies that are in it. It was not a clear LZ, okay? The rest of the guys were like, oh, my God, there's a POW. Sweet, let's see. They're like, I'm so excited. And then they're like, oh. And then Murdoch's like, get out of the room. Yeah. Yeah. There's big boy business to be done. (laughs) Yeah. This actually has, like, so after the um, helicopter leaves, it's, like, one of the shots that I thought was really great. Like, there's, there's like, a wide shot that shows all of the Vietnamese uh, soldiers like slowly walking up, like Rambo had gotten to the top of this hill and they show them like slowly walking up this hill surrounding him. And mm-hmm. it's like a really like impressive shot. I thought, yeah, yeah. it's probably like a hundred guys or something. Yeah. yeah. It, like, lo- it looks really cool. They it's... have to make the point that there's no way that he can yeah. Rambo yeah. his way out of this one, you know, <laughs> yep, so. yep. no like... matter how rambunctious he gets. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna Rambo his way out of That's this. Right. Oh, he does eventually. <laughs> so they knock him out, and he comes to being hung in a mud pit full of leeches. Whoa, this right. is so it, the, the the way they reveal this scene is so gross. It's like you see um, first, it's like just a bunch of pigs in like a pig stomach yeah. or whatever, and you see all the gross like. Uh, droppings and everything like slowly going down this kind of like pipe all the yeah. way down into where uh we see that rambo's being held in this mud pit where it's like all the runoff is going and it's so yeah. gross and it looked it looked like and, i don't know what it really was but it looked gross as fuck. and he's wearing like an egyptian diaper like, yeah. <laughs> he's wearing i thought for a second cloth. i was like is he gonna be naked yeah no he's not. um and they pull him up and then lo and behold a russian walks in dun dun dun, dun. It's the Russian. It's always the Russians. It's always the Russians. And I guess the Russians have been training the Vietnamese. Is that a thing that really happened? Should have known. Um, in dispute? I don't think so. Okay. But I don't, I don't know enough about it to say for sure. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, overall, do we think it's good or bad that they take some of the weight of being the enemy off of the Vietnamese by having these Russians be like almost the bigger bad. Like, I, cause I don't know, like, is that a I think, good thing or I, a bad I thing? I think in 85, that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. I think that, that people want to, I, I, I don't know. That's actually, there's so much baggage there. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I'm not entirely I think, sure. I think, I think it takes it, elevates it to uh, kind of a more of a James Bond fantasy type thing. And maybe it's not a fantasy. Maybe it is something that happened. I don't want to speak on that. Yeah. But I think that the, in the screenplay, it takes it so that the movie can get to some of the more action beats that it gets to um later on because they it basically the, these russians that come in are james bond villains like yeah, yeah because i guess it kind of like relieves the movie of the burden of having to be like right. okay yeah the vietnamese are holding these pow's and doing a bunch of horrible things but like what did we do and why yeah. are we here and you know right why were they there in the first place because it's like well russians bad obviously yeah, you know? yeah. They're, they're, they're an easy uh, enemy and uh yeah like here like yeah <laughs> send, send in the caricatures yeah and and i think that that the I think the movie would be far more problematic if they didn't 
do that. Because you basically get this interrogation scene with this Russian colonel who's just very much... And it's not even clear what he wants here. <laughs> like, he basically just wants to break Rambo He wants fun. Rambo to call back and say, don't do this don't again. Don't try anything. Which, right. like, obviously they're not going to because they didn't want him to do it in the first right. place. Right. Like, the Russian guy even intercepted the transmission of the Murdoch calling it off so he knows that, like... Right. They screwed him, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really weird motivational scene, but basically Rambo is in his diaper... Uh, up again <laughs> on a on a uh a mattress bed frame. spring yeah, yeah being electrocuted. A, a bed frame being electrocuted and then they're heating up his knife to cut him and he's not going to talk just from the principle of the thing like if you see these muscles like i'm not like i don't feel pain yeah. um uh, pain what, don't hurt the pain don't hurt uh, but when they threaten the pow john q pow Mm -hmm. uh, Rambo si decides, well... Oh, hells no. Okay, I'll fine. talk. Because they were going to put the knife in this POW. Yeah, yeah. Knife in the eye. Gross. Gross. Uh, and then so what Rambo does, <laughs> he sits down at this ham radio. <laughs> He's like, I need to repeat the radio scene from yeah, the first, first movie. movie. Yeah, so he, sits, so he sits in the radio, and all the Russians are like, I, this is going to be good. Like, the Americans are going to be so scared when their <laughs> buff dude's going to be like, uh, don't come get He's me. He's going to cry on the radio. radio. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but what Rambo does is he gets on the radio, hears Murdoch, and then threatens him to tell him that he's going to come and kill him. <laughs> because Rambo did see that Ko had infiltrated the base mm -hmm. and was coming to save him. So, mm -hmm. like, he was basically... He, yeah, he saw her, like, peeking through the slats yeah. of wood. Um, Disguised oh. as a prostitute herself. Yes. Yeah. It's the only way they let women in the camp. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is... That movie was world... That, I mean, I'm sorry. That scene was world building before. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Cycle Girl. Poor from Village. Cyclo Girl. girl. Well, da, da, da. obviously, we went to believe that this operative could have snuck into the camp without that scene setting it up. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Rambo's like, Murdoch, I'm going to come there and I'm going to kill you and your entire team. No, he doesn't say that. He just says, I'm coming for you. you. <laughs> Most to of kill, the team had nothing to do to with kill this. you and your entire team. They were just yeah. operating the computers. They're nerds anyway. They're probably not even combat trained. Computers are evil <laughs> in this universe you just computer <laughs> they must be killed uh and then rambo rambos he and rambos his way right out of there <laughs> kills a lot of folks yep yep <laughs> escapes right into the jungle yeah we're, we're hell is home and hell <laughs> is right. the jungle but we're not too busy to have an emotional moment about oh. love oh that's right yeah He's fallen in love after two seconds. <laughs> well, I mean, and this just feels so inauthentic because it's, it's Rambo. Weird. He's not, he doesn't care about that at all. Yeah. You know it. Like This is uh, one of the Sylvester like a, Stallone additions to the script. It's like a blank slate. Well, so if you want to give the movie a lot of credit, you could say that he goes along with it because he knows that Ko just wants to get out of Vietnam so bad and right. go have a better life. And even though he may not be like, oh, I'm in love with her, I want to bone her, or whatever, like he is like, I can help this girl, she helped me, and I owe that to her. Right. It's not like he starts, he doesn't have sex with her, he doesn't really make out with her. There's like no she, time. She kisses him <laughs> once, and he's like, all right, yeah, okay, you know, but like, it doesn't seem like he's super into it so yeah if you want to give them a lot of credit you can be like he's just going along with it to sure. be nice yeah but i'll we take don't... you back to the united states in just one second just wait a second oh shoot oh no you're dead oh uh, no damn it damn <laughs> she died like the very next second but shoot. luckily there is a very cool turquoise necklace that i can wear this... to show that i'm fighting for her <laughs> yeah this is hilarious. So, like, apparently um, they shot and uh, even played in front of test audiences. Uh, one of those classic, like, oh, yeah. one of those classic, like, hold the bodies and go, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, uh. And then, apparently it was... <laughs> Ram, no! <laughs> apparently it was like, you know... Uh, He's looking up at the sky, and the the <laughs> camera goes wider, 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 and that the no like echoed throughout the jungle, <laughs> and they showed it at one like 
screening with with an audience and apparently they cracked up yeah the <laughs> i think it's much better the way it is where he just kind of hugs yeah. her and he's like <laughs> the producers and then he moves immediately on. were like let's take that out <laughs> because yeah i think then it gives you the plausible deniability of being like he was just like going along with it and he, he doesn't want to like pain her by right. rejecting her advance yeah. he figures this this girl this she thinks this is the only way I can, yeah, to I get can, i can know. get her to america it was yeah. so funny that they talk about that and in the making of because like i felt like that was going to happen in the movie <laughs> yeah. and i was like waiting for it and then it didn't happen and i was like oh wow okay no <laughs> 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 Yeah, no, it's no. better because it just it would imply. Oh, no, I think to Rambo, her death is just as tragic as any of the other right. soldiers, and to do that big no would imply that she is somehow more important when she's really not. Yeah, and she's like, "Remember me forever," <laughs> as she dies. Yeah, and I'm like, I wonder if he will. Probably. <laughs> I can't wait to see if she's mentioned once oh, in the rest <laughs> of the movies. <laughs> Should be interesting. Should yeah. be interesting. Yeah, he'll still be wearing the necklace. Yeah. I definitely won't pawn this necklace off when I get back to the States for money. It's probably not worth anything. No, you never know. <laughs> it's worth the memories. That's right. Uh, <laughs> so then the all hell breaks loose. Um, yeah, he uh, doesn't he also take like part of her dress or something and make it into a bandana? He does. Which I think was really cool. Yeah, because he I, needs the red bandana, and she had a red dress on. Yeah, we're kind of you're, we're kind of like making fun of parts of this movie, but like one of the things that I really liked about this movie is that you can feel, you can really feel like the icon iconography of Rambo yeah. like taking shape in this movie. There's all these scenes. Um, we we glossed over a scene where he like talks at length about how. His, uh, well, maybe not at length, but he says that, like, as much as Stallone talks about anything. Yeah, he says that his knife is like his lucky charm or whatever. Right. And he has a thing about that. And then there's also scenes where, um, we haven't got to it yet, but he, uh, has now his iconic, uh, bow. Yeah. In this movie. And the Rambo. Yeah. And there's a couple shots, like, where he's about to go on his rampage where they take a really long time to, like, show him, like, grabbing the bow. And it's, like, a very deliberate right. shot. And, and then, you know, him putting on this bandana and everything. And I was just like, oh, man, this is awesome. You can, like, you can feel it becoming, like, an icon in, while yeah. you're watching this movie. Yeah. Knowing, like, where he is now. And it's just, that was, like, a cool feeling. I was like, man, they really did their work I, on this. I think that, like, like, this is a good time to talk about, you know, you're talking about the iconography of this. This movie was critically panned mm-hmm. and beloved uh, by audiences. Yeah. It was a giant blockbuster. It has all of the DNA of, of these action movies. Uh, and really what I think that the action movies that we grew up on, like we talked about how the first Rambo had, you know, diehard DNA and those other things. But like, this is like, like Michael Bay was, was born. <laughs> yes. Out of, this, out of this movie. So many explosions. Um, and I think that it's one of those things that, for better or for worse, it's it, it taps into the collective unconscious of just like oh like fuck him up Rambo like That's go right. get him uh, and this is where that kind of rampage is unleashed in this movie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, even though I've like only obviously seen one other Rambo movie besides this, I felt like in the um, beginning of the movie I was kind of like, well, he's going to rescue the POWs. Like, there's no gray area in that, you know. Right. And I was like, I felt like the greatest part of the first movie was the fact that you're like, wait a minute, like, who am I cheering for? What is even sp- right. this supposed yeah, to yeah. be? Like, questioning the establishment and uh-huh. showing that, you know, there's not good people on both sides or whatever, you know. Like, yeah. um, And so when the twist happened, I was happy because I was like, okay, he is, you know, somehow going against establishment a little bit. There is this gray area mm-hmm. there. I don't know that they fully like stuck the landing on yeah, that lesson no. there, but I was at least glad that that element was still there. Because right. if it had been gone completely, like probably would have totally lost me. And I would have been like, this is not like yeah. Rambo from before. So. Yeah. I still feel like the first film has way loftier, like uh, themes and ideas on its yes. mind than mm-hmm. this movie. But yeah, I, I agree. I appreciated that twist as well. Yeah. So, all that being said, it's time to kill some people. It's time to... Rambo has brought... Although he lost everything Mm -hmm. when he followed this plane, he found some explosive tips. Well, he had... Yeah, that's true. He had brought those with him, so maybe they were, like, on his person? I guess. So, he has some super dope Luckily, he had had just the tips with him. I'm sorry, that's terrible. Um, Explosive arrows. Yes, this was the best. (laughs) 
because they use them to great effect throughout the rest of the film. <laughs> Does she maybe grab it for me for him? I can't remember. Like he definitely I don't packs think he them. lost everything when he yeah, found the yeah. plane. He lost the computer y stuff. I they definitely like. show him pack the little arrow tips in a box that says explosive on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe she grabbed his bag once he got captured or something. I don't really remember, but like he, he I don't think he lost everything it's when he pretty clear he's cl- carrying him in his butt the whole time. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, that was a very was, obvious I mean otherwise the Russians would have found He's like <laughs> Explosive <laughs> tips. I mean, if he had it on him as far as when he got captured, ostensibly right. it would be somewhere in the camp or once he could break well, out. Well, here's the him. thing, though. If he had them on him when he was captured, then he never should have been captured because <laughs> these true. things are... No, there are too many people. <laughs> are there? Because it seems like there's more people at this point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because now you have Russians, too. Yeah, because Rambo goes on a rampage. <laughs> We get, I, He's well, like, you get an explosion, you get an explosion, and this guy over here gets an explosion. And he, we get him back in the woods. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we get we get another, like, Rambo taking out people one by one. By one. one. He's got enough time to, like, choke a dude out, and then he's got enough time to, like, fully cover his body in mud. In mud. And, and hide great. in a mud puddle. He was like uh, PETA from the Hunger Games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Then he blows up an entire building, and then another building, and then a bunch of cars that are on a bridge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I only packed five arrows, but I think I have eight. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, then, yeah, then there's a, uh, a sequence that I think is probably one of the more famous sequences in the movie where he's running along this waterfall ridge, uh, and then there's the lone... Vietnamese general guy that we've seen like yeah this is the guy they've been focusing on like right. he's, he's the one who's been like chasing him down the entire he, was, he was the guy who was with Cycle Girl that's um, right that's and right. Uh, <laughs> so he ducks behind this guy's a machine gun and then Rambo is, takes a minute to assess the situation he's like this guy isn't shit I got this and so he slowly <laughs> ever glacially slowly stands up looks at the guy well, the guy continues to fire his gun at him. <laughs> then Rambo reaches behind his back, mm-hmm. draws an arrow. Well, this guy now has to reload. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, he'll never hit me. It's just an arrow. No, no. I got a gun. <laughs> then reloads, pulls out a handgun, starts shooting at Rambo. Rambo, not changing his pace at all. Draws back his arrow. Mm -hmm. And then we've seen these arrows blow up cars, buildings. Same thing previously. Like, you don't see the (laughs) rocket or the arrow traveling through the air. You see it release and then immediately cut to an explosion where this guy was apparently made of old sofas. (laughs) (laughs) This dude blows the fuck up. And it's amazing. I was like, whoa! I didn't know what was going to happen. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so, you yeah. see it hit him for like a second and he's like huh yeah <laughs> <laughs> I love that you you uh, earlier this week you sent over that uh, the, the UHF the UHF yeah. Rambo clip and if you guys have not seen this movie I don't know what you're doing go watch Special UHF City. Im- yeah. immediately but there's a there's a whole Rambo parody sequence that is amazing that is spot on <laughs> yeah <laughs> roar yeah <laughs> Uh, then Rambo gets into a chopper. Yeah, this is where all the POWs. Yeah, yeah, this is where I was like starting to get a little like everything blurs together for me. I'm like, yeah. how did he get a helicopter? I don't know. It was the remember. Russians helicopter. Yeah. Um, he's yeah. able to overpower them. But yeah, he gets all like, what is it, like six or seven guys yeah. in there. And yeah. one guy even gets shot like as they're taking yeah. off. So. Oh, well, and then like the thing I love about it, like he be- ends up being like a, uh, you know, kind of a squad leader, and like he's like, these guys are all soldiers. He's like, you get on the gun, you do this thing. Yeah. And like, so like, and they're all like, yeah, 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 we're doing this. Like, they can run this chopper and get out. Um, and so he's flying, and then those pesky Russians. They uh, they also have a helicopter. They also they have another one. It's a Hind D. Yeah. Um, which is this movie is so metagr- solid. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, anyway, everybody in it, the mercenaries and everything. Yep. Uh, and so they're flying. Uh, this is a Russian gunship. They're just in like a transport <laughs> helicopter type of thing. And they're outgunned. They should they're, just be dead. They should just <laughs> be dead. But Rambo manages to fake a crash. 
And then the Russian, like the Russian soldier is like, what? Where could they be? And he rounds a corner and he sees that the helicopter is just idling in the middle of a river. And he's like, ooh, I got to get closer to this. I think then, I got one more arrow. And then, and then, and then they're, cutting, they're cutting to Rambo. Looks like that he's been he's he's incapacitated. He's he's dead in the 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 cockpit of this helicopter. <laughs> helicopter. The Russians get a little bit closer. They get a little bit closer, and then surprise, motherfucker! <laughs> Rambo was pretending to be asleep, <laughs> which is fine, so, I so guess. Dumb. And and he pops up with a rocket launcher to shoot them. <laughs> Because the Russians got close enough because they're like, oh, is he really dead? In a fucking helicopter. <laughs> got to see if he's breathing. <laughs> they, did, they didn't just blow up the helicopter. So that they thought that they just blew up. When they round the corner and they see it just landed, they're like, oh, intriguing. <laughs> so stupid. There, there seems to be like a, a lot of focus on actually keeping these POWs where I have a hard time believing that at this point they wouldn't have just automatically killed all of them and hid the evidence. Right. Like, but, which, you know, may have happened no, in real but life. So, but, but they're so good in the rice paddies. Yes, <laughs> but like, the best once, workers. Once Rambo gets away with the first guy, I feel like they would have killed all the others. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yes. I don't know. Like, there's no reason to come back, yeah. Well, Rambo gets out. Because mm-hmm. he killed those Russians with the old pretend to be sleeping. <laughs> he gets all the way back to the American camp. And at this point, the main guy, Murdoch, can't really do anything because the 30 other guys are like, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> like they're all excited and running out to like greet and me- give medical treatment to these yeah, POWs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he knows he really can't do anything And anymore. then Rambo... Goes to war with the true villains of this movie. <laughs> Computer. <laughs> the rampage is not over. <laughs> he walks in with his giant helicopter gun uh, and his muscles and just screams to the top of his lungs this and is a, shoots all the computers. This is another one of the like iconic scenes from yeah. the movie. That didn't, that didn't help him or hurt him yeah, or really do he's just anything. They he's, didn't do enough to villainize the computers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, it, it's also, not, it honestly doesn't make sense other than like he's just doing it to release his anger at like yeah. everything that's going on. The system. And it's like at that point he's like, there's no one else to shoot. I'm just going to shoot these computers. The computers didn't. Yeah, like you said, they didn't hurt or help him in any way that we saw. They're pretty much yeah. a non-entity. In yeah, the movie. Like, and like the only thing they even use is radio, which is yeah. like not their computer. It turns out he had one of those back in Washington. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I think part of the part of uh, what proves that it's not a, really about the computers at all is that he's like unloading on these computers, but then he just turns the gun up to the sky and just screams Roar! for like an extra, an extra 10 seconds as he just unloads the rest of the clip. And yeah. I think, yeah. And I mean, I think probably the better motivation is just, he's trying to do something to really piss off Murdoch, but they don't make that clear enough. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I took it as more just like a cathartic, like I can't like, he's tired of getting dicked around. Like, you know, this yeah. is finally a mission. Like the whole thing was like, you know, right at the beginning when Troutman was like, trying to recruit him he oh, says yeah. like he says like this time it's up to you, you know because uh, can't yeah. we win this yeah, time i asked if we can win and he's like this time it's up to you yeah and so this whole time he's like finally i can i i didn't get a chance to win when i was in vietnam before because and i didn't me. win against the small town police yeah, yeah so now it's finally up to me i'm gonna go in and i can like you know in in his mind like reshape his history and like say like i can finally have a win you know in vietnam and i think you know this is just like a like much like his monologue at the end of uh, Rambo one, this is his chance to just like let all his emotions out and just scream it away and yeah. just shoot a gun like at nothing. Yeah, and then he screams at Murdoch and he bangs on the walls next to him and stuff, but it never really like reaches that poignant point. Right. Uh, that the uh, words are better than he, shooting, but he really time. tries <laughs> with his little speech. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is. Ugh. Although, uh, there was one point where Stallone was talking about, and he was like, which I'm sure that made everybody's eyes roll in the theater. Uh, So he admitted that it was like, that was a really, like, not... I don't know how to describe it, but basically it was was cheesy. But he's like, but that was a sentiment that was conveyed to me by a lot of veterans. Mm. Uh, And so, you know, I put it in the movie. But, like, it was him talking, I mean, you know, classic Stallone of him being super candid about that I just want 
you would love these veterans as much as they love their country. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it was really cheesy, but, yeah, you're yeah. kind of like, well, I mean, that's probably what people say. Yeah, yeah for, that, sure, that, for sure. So, the, so there was an interview that I read that he talked about that afterwards, and at the time I was like, oh, God. And he was like, yeah, like he, you know, admitted I, that. I wonder if there was a better way to paraphrase it. Though. There was. Yeah. There mm-hmm. was. Um, I mean, and it's kind of hard to get back to like now for the serious part after you blew up a man with a bow and arrow. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, that's like at the if like after the end of Mission Impossible Two, after they like kung fu on motorbikes, if it was just like, well, like that's why everyone should be vaccinated. <laughs> that way we can't have chimeras, <laughs> doves. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, the movie ends a very similar fashion with uh, Troutman and Rambo and Rambo walking freeze frame. That's right. Freeze frame. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Freeze frame into Frank Stallone. Oh, that's oh, correct. Oh, my God. Now, this terrible song starts at the end called <laughs> Peace in Our Life. And oh. I thought for sure uh, that... I was like, oh, God, this is probably Dan Hill again from the first movie. Because, yeah. you know, we, we didn't talk about the score yet, but Jerry Goldsmith is back for this yep. one. And he brings along, um, there's a little bit more synths going on, but there's also like. The original theme. Yeah. Great. There's cool. They, they bring back that like kind of sneaky piano theme and they uh-huh. play it a little differently. And then sometimes when, um, at certain parts when Rambo is like reflecting on his past, they bring like that more mournful theme mm-hmm. from the original Rambo, like the wrong, long road. Mm-hmm. Um theme like which Rambo's i thought was really the, great like rambo's the hulk yeah so it was it was cool that he was back um but then yeah uh the credits roll and is going through and i was like who the fuck is singing and then it's frank stallone yeah um and it's just it's a, always frank stallone let's go over some of the lyrics it's Justin. just an awesome uh, an awful i was about to say awesome um, just an awesome song it's awesomely a, awful i'm trying to find the What's the? I'm trying to find the lyrics here. It kind of sounds similar to the note progression of uh, "It's all coming back to me now." You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The uh, here we go. Hold on here. Um, we we gave our hearts. We gave it all. Flame in the fire burns forevermore. The sorrow in believing, honor and truth, gray spires climbing, wrapped around our youth. <laughs> Peace in our life. Remember the call. Oh, a cheer for my brothers. Think of them all. <laughs> Home of the brave will never fall. The strength of our nation belongs to us all. Now, okay, y- me reading those lyrics, you might be like, oh, they're not that bad. But imagine them sung along to the warbled, mo- the, the ch- cheesiest melody, the cheesiest, like most hopeful patriotic 80s melody you can think of. Well, it just doesn't make sense. That's not the movie we just watched. (laughs) Like, that song could have played at the end of the Chuck Norris movie, which it did in a different version. (laughs) But, like, it doesn't fit this movie at all. I just feel like both, and like the end credit song for the last movie too was also like weirdly out yeah. of place. Like it's like it's like just, the government's gonna fuck you, and it was all a mistake. Like and yeah, now we're was, all patriotic, and here's yeah, the cheesiest yeah, song you've yeah. ever heard in your life. Ugh. Um, we might have to put it. I, I'm tempt. I'm like, you gotta I, put it at the end. Of the I'm like, do I put the song at the end or you I do. put score? The no, score. You put the song. So, you put the score last time, didn't we? The so- score is so good. Yeah, I know. I put the score last time. I can't. I can't put you gotta, the song. You so. guys. Put the song. <laughs> You gotta. You, you'll hear it. You'll hear. Yeah, it. Yeah, Frank Stallone needs the thirteen cents or whatever it is. That <laughs> yeah. Frank Stallone needs thirteen cents. <laughs> Frank Stallone, that's you're the, expendable. That's the that's the subtitle of Rambo: Last Blood. <laughs> yeah. So is this where we kind of get the expendable? Thing? Oh, it has to be. That's what it I has to be. Or is it well, more? You, you heard us joking about movies. it, but like he like the, in the movie, like it's this heart to heart scene with him and Cohen. He's like, well. Because she says, Rambo, how you be here. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You've come a long way for (laughs) Vietnam. How you be here. And he says, oh, it's because I'm expendable. And she says, what be expendable? (laughs) Or Uh, what what expendable is or something like that. I hated that she was speaking like that. Yeah. And then he's like, his definition is, it's like if someone invites you to a party but it doesn't really matter if you show up or not. I'm like, is that what it's meant to I mean, but that sounds more like inconsequential. Expendable is like, you it's know. Like, it's like we kind of want to get rid of yeah, you. Yeah, you're putting it out <laughs> yeah. there yeah. knowing it's going to, you know. We hope uh, you don't show up. Yeah. yeah. 
No, uh, yeah, her broken English was uh, really unfortunate. But otherwise, what mean you, Justin? <laughs> Other than that, I thought like uh, I liked that she was like a pretty capable character. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, but uh, and they don't talk about it. But I think her she had like really light eyes and kind of light hair. Yeah. I don't know if they're like implying that she's one of the Boudoy, like the mixed mm-hmm. kids right, that right. are left behind. So she yeah. said her father was an intelligence officer, but she didn't say like for what side. Yeah, so. Yeah. Well, it's. Yeah, I think it's about that time where we get to talk about how many. What are we going to say? Cyclo girl whores. So, oh yeah. <laughs> Cyclo girl. Cyclo girl whores. <laughs> uh, from village. Uh, <laughs> oh, from village. <laughs> Those are the nice ones. <laughs> Would you give Rambo first blood part two? <laughs> part two. <laughs> so many words in this title. Um, me personally, I think I'm going to go with five cyclo girls because I don't yeah. have a lot of money, but I also am not cheap. I'm not cheap. So I'm going to get five. What if they're, what if they're not from village? Okay. If they're from village. From jungle. They're, yeah. From jungle. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. They're from unincorporated township. <laughs> uh, no, I think I'm going to go with five. Um, I, I feel like it doesn't. Okay, okay, it reaches different heights than the last movie. <laughs> Michael Bay Heights. Yeah, this movie reaches like 80s action movie yeah. heights, but not like good movie heights. No. <laughs> like like important film heights in my opinion. I uh you know, I talked about the iconography and I think that is a really cool thing to um to see. To, to witness yeah. like in hindsight be like, "Oh man, yeah, they no wonder these things became such a big yeah. deal." And, you know, there's there's uh, in the special features too. There's talk of not necessarily this movie particularly, but uh, <laughs> I don't know if he's just making this up. But the 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 guy who wrote the original book um, talks about how he went to Poland uh, for like a signing of his book, and um, one of the journalists there was like, "Oh, you have no idea how important like the Rambo movies were for." Mm-hmm helping to like break apart the USSR and everything. Cause mm-hmm. they were like, those movies were banned. And uh, so I feel like a lot of that maybe is on this movie. Cause this was such a huge hit. Yeah. Well, and I think that, that having a huge hit like this, that does have some uh, cynicism is not the wrong thing mm-hmm. is, is wrong. But yeah. These movies encourage questioning of authority, which exactly. is what you don't want in a yeah. Soviet society. Yeah. But I feel like the themes shine brighter in the first film. Sure. So yeah. for me, I was like, we you know we've seen a lot of action films since then, so part of me was like, okay, it's like whatever, some explosions yeah. and stuff. Um, so I'm going to give this a five. I still enjoyed it a lot, mm-hmm. um, but I still really think that the last movie was a lot better. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to give it six. Psycho girl whores. Um, <laughs> I'm a, I think I just I want to believe. You know, I want to give it a little bit more credit and yeah. try to like believe in what they were trying to do instead of uh, just think like, wow, that love scene was really stupid. Instead, I'm like, well, maybe they were trying to be more nuanced and show that he, right. you know, like whatever, blah, 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 whatever I already said. But, you know, it's kind of like I appreciate the intention. Like, I appreciate that they didn't just make the Vietnamese like cartoonishly evil, mm-hmm. but I don't think that they did it correctly by bringing in the Russians. You right. know, I appreciate that they want to question authority and what the United States government did. But I don't know that, you know, the way that they did it with the computers and whatever yeah. else was really the right way to go about it. Um, but that said, obviously, the action's awesome. Um, you know, they're out in the jungle. There's tons of, like, obviously, all these people went through a lot to make this. And um, I, and it was entertaining and, you know, action-packed. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll give it six. I'm going to give it six Cycle Horse from Village. Uh, I think that that it's one of those movies that is now part of the cultural DNA. Like, it is so buried deep down in terms of all the other action movies that came after it. Mm -hmm. And it set up new archetypes, like you said. Like, it set up the iconography of Rambo, the iconography of that lone soldier. And watching it now, part of it was honestly a little bit boring, um, just because like the, the action was crazy. It was fun, but it was, it's all, it's done. It's been done bigger and better. And I saw those movies first. Um, but I think that there is the, the message is more nuanced and more artfully done in the first movie. But I think that there's still a germ of something that is crucial, uh, in this movie. And I think that it is delivered, uh, in a package that is far more, 
widespread or easily digestible. That's yeah, I mean, we'll see where it goes. I mean, yeah. I want to believe that maybe they'll take the good things and continue to expand <laughs> on those, but I feel like oh, it's I don't probably believe, I don't not going to happen. happen. Yeah. I don't believe that at it's all. It's not going to happen. What is the title of the next movie, Justin? The, the, the next movie is just called Rambo 3. <laughs> oh, okay. Rambo takes New York. <laughs> Rambo takes New York. Um, this is just, uh, how many years later, three years later, 1988. Okay. So one came out the year I was born. The next yep. one came out the year my brother was born. Ooh. So okay, we're all about the Rambo movie. Skipped us. Nothing happened for us. Yeah. Sons of bitches. Uh, yeah. Cause like, like, you know, like Tyler said earlier, uh, this movie was a huge hit and I just mm-hmm. want you guys to think about this for a second. Um, in 1985, the movie made in the U.S. 150 million dollars in the U.S. alone. What? Oh my god! <laughs> and that is more money than movies like Hobbs and Shaw, <laughs> Detective Pikachu, <laughs> Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Godzilla, King of Monsters. Like in the in, in, in eighty five. This That's is in nineteen eighty five. This is nineteen eighty five. Unadjusted. Unadjusted, and it That's... made another basically one hundred fifty million overseas. What so it made. The hell? 300 million total and that is nuts bring back the mono culture yeah oh my <laughs> yeah. god exactly exactly it's just so impressive and, and crazy honestly mm. um so uh yeah so that's why there's a rambo 3 just yeah. a few years later yep so where do we think he's gonna go I mean, if I'm being cynical, there's just another mission in Vietnam. <laughs> yeah. again. Troutman, I hope that Troutman is back again, but I don't know what would be the reason for him to go back again after he gets fucked over? You think it's like more POWs. He's been fucked over that, twice. Now the now one of the Vietnamese military guys is president. Let's Maybe say, just like Chuck Norris, he'll go to rescue the Buidoy, the dust of life, or yeah, whatever yeah. they're called. I was, yeah. was going to say, like, yeah, he, it's going to be just like Missing in Action, where it's like, guess what? He had a son while he was there. Yeah. He's got to go rescue his son. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, maybe. I don't know. We never talked about this, but apparently there was a cut scene from the first movie where he has sex with a prostitute yes, and then starts yes. crying. It was it was another flashback when he's in the mines. Yeah. Uh, a weird scene. A weird scene. Yeah. <laughs> Unnecessary. So we'll see what happens. Um, and I know we like referred to Chuck Norris and Missing in Action like a hundred times. So go back and listen to those episodes oh. because it will, you know, color what we are. Doing. Do you look it up spoilers on your I phone? Just, I just looked up what the plot was. For Put the your movie. phone down, you Tyler. Cheater. <laughs> cheater. <laughs> We're not supposed to know until we hit play. <laughs> Anyways, um, I look forward to another week of the Rambo workout. Yes, next week. <laughs> Rambo, becoming Rambo part. Yeah, three. right now, if you see Justin from the back, it's like you can't even recognize him. Yeah. But from the front, he looks the same. It's actually no. <laughs> Justin was lying. The the subtitle is Rambo Three Leg Day. <laughs> <laughs> we finally got to the legs, legs you guys. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, until next time, Eliz, where can people get in touch with us? Yes, please email us sequelrights at gmail dot com with your questions, stories, and suggestions for future franchises, and also connect with us on social media, Twitter. Instagram and Facebook at Sequel Rights. Tyler, how can people give us their love and send us tributes for the Hunger Games? <laughs> give us your five tiny belt blades um, on, on Apple Podcasts. It's Podcast. baby belt blades. Ba- Jesus, oh, sorry, baby belt blades. We're even paying attention to Liz's clear designation. <laughs> baby belt blade. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, seriously though, uh, the five star reviews go a long way. We really appreciate them. They help us with the algorithms, help more people see the show, and that makes life better for all of us. Even after mm-hmm. hearing Frank Stallone sing, <laughs> actually, that's what they like, g- give us reviews so more people have to endure the torture of listening to the song that you're uh, about to hear. Yeah, man. Go to his Wikipedia page, and it's basically like, he's a singer. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> is he? And he's been on, like, 85 reality shows <laughs> yeah. as the is, brother of Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> Hi, I'm the brother of Sylvester <laughs> Stallone. <laughs> my name's not important. He's just my brother. <laughs> Anyways, we'll see you guys next week. Don't forget to pack your bow for Rambo 3. We gave our hearts. We gave it all. Flaming. Sorrow and believing, honor and truth, race by us blinding, wrapped around our youth. Peace in our life, remember the call. Oh, a tear for my brothers, think of them all.
never forget Tomorrow's a danger Watching us all Telling the people She wraps around